Outing reception for both players. Wonderful atmosphere in Bolton. And you know, strange things happen in snooker. Very strange things happen in snooker finals. Mark Allen could win this 10-2. It could be over in a very short amount of time. But we could be here at midnight with a 10-9 victory for either of them. Making predictions at this level is a very risky business. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for him 10. Mark Allen to break. All of that said, Neil, I think it's fair to assume that Mark Allen knows it's now his to lose. Yeah, I mean, we can find uh, instances of players coming back from behind in finals, but there's a lot more from this position than just go on and win. And uh, the way that Mark played this afternoon, his form would have to dip, I think, for that. To turn around, or... Judd, of course, would have to start knocking in balls like that all evening. it in nicely it's a question of what he's actually on now Five. when he comes around right side of the table and yeah, they're all in each other's way unfortunately the trump fight the intimidating upside about judge trump about Ronnie O'Sullivan about Stephen Hendry. At their best, they can be truly inspirational and they can turn a match on its head in no time. And of course, the other players aren't ignorant of that fact. They know full well that's a possibility. It's all conjecture. What we do know is that this has been the most extraordinary season for Snooker Southpaws. Left-handers thriving like you wouldn't believe. Barry Hawkins winning the European Masters. Mark Williams, our own British Open. And Judd Trump has got three titles already under his belt. The left-handers dominating the campaign. Yes, it wasn't an easy up and down from that red on the left side because the other red, he caught it, thinner contact was possibly in the way. So the keyboard sort of limps its way up the table, hasn't really made it to all that far. So Judd with a not so straightforward opener here, I think he is going to be attacking tonight, he is anyway, perhaps even more so. When the chances do come. Well, he needs the red to go safe here. He lost control of it a little bit. And he is a little fortunate for it to do so. Not a seat to be had.
And a mark with a possibly similar shot on the other side of the table, up and down off the right hand red. Could also play almost a swing in the cue ball, figure of eight round the angles off that one on the left side he's playing. Again, he hit quite a lot of the red. It's okay, as long as he hasn't left a long red. Possibly one to the right corner, but it's quite straight. <clears throat> Seeing it from that angle, I don't think the red that's fairly straight is actually on. But uh, this he's playing here, cue ball, he's got to guide around away from the other reds if he plays it. Oh, he's done that. <laughs> Played it so well that the cue ball went exactly where he wanted it to had he missed the red. To pop that and avoid all traffic was a work of art. Players are very tempted to play bulk colours to middle pockets, but surely from where he is, it's too much. Got to try and drop in behind a, a colour, but even then, that's not an easy shot. The reds are spread so far and wide across the table, it's hard to cover them all. What I'm saying, you hit it a fraction too hard and something gets into view. Those two reds are accessible. Well, I think the one nearest the pocket will actually sneak past the green, the potting angle. Tough shot, though. OK, then. Now, after missing this red, Alan could have left something a lot easier than he has, but nevertheless, this qualifies as a chance. The red's not in conventional positions, but they're OK. One. Just wanted to hold for the red to left middle by playing it. Dead weight to the pocket. I mean, as Phil said, it's, you know, it's a good chance to make a few. Not necessarily a guarantee to make enough to get the frame one here, but he could get a, do some damage. The red's in open play.
35. Needed to clear the pink spot there to be able to pop the red close to the pocket, and he's just about made the journey. And the black on its spot would provide more options. Well, if he rolls his red in, the black will go to the same pocket as the red he just wriggled in. 43. Have the angle to just screw in behind the reds. Now he had to play it too cushion weight. Is that cue ball to stop? I think he's okay. Yes, he is. His left hander that shouldn't be a problem. And now, from a chance that was good but not necessarily a frame winner, then this goes in. It will be. He's done well here. This has been an excellent break, in fact. Get the feeling that Mark Allen was forced into the long red, which he missed, and he sat and watched ever since. 67. Sixty-eight. And now Trump will target yet another century. Seventy-two. Lots of screw and right hand reverse running side. It's a minor irritation, but an imperative frame to win. Trem has won it fluently with a break of 77. Do not write him off just yet.
no one wants to fall well behind in a major snooker final. The one positive, especially for someone like Judd Trump, he can play with positivity, with freedom for a while as he tries to pull back. Of course, the pendulum of pressure will eventually swing back towards him, but right now, he's just trying to enjoy himself, trying to restore some respectability to the scoreline, and maybe, just maybe, get back onto level terms. The boot was on the other foot when they met in the famed UK Championship final of 2011. Trump led 8-3, looked all over the winner. Allen then just went on a spurt, made four centuries in that match, came back to only 9-8 down. And Trump had to dig very deep indeed, put together a 91 in frame 18 to cross the line. Prevailing emotion. Relief. This is where it is. They're incredibly dangerous. With the fact that he can knock these in. If he's got no easy safety shot, he's got the ability to just pot his way out of trouble there. Steering the cue ball back to the bulk end. I didn't really know a lot about that. He thought he'd hit a red, I think, a screw back from a different red, but he just missed all the reds. There was really nothing to get the cue ball at the other end of the table on. Is he playing here brown off the cushion, perhaps? Interesting shot, this. He gets hit right. Mark Anna's in trouble. Uh, he's just wriggled past it. Could have been troublesome. Parted. He actually doesn't have an easy shot on the bulk colour here because, as you can see, they're all tied up. But yellow and brown are.
I think in his attempts to not go into his bunker and just wait for chances to come, he took that on. He didn't really get very close to it. He had much too thick. But he is aware that he can't just sit and wait for Judd to make errors. That's not how he got this big lead in the first place. Judd can whittle away at the deficit by just winning frames in one visit like that previous frame. It makes the tasks more achievable, I think. He's not going to grind his way through four or five frames in a row. He's got to win them in the style he's been playing all week. Seven. Anyone who's played this game knows that a day makes a big difference. You can be playing very poorly, come back the next day, play like a world beater, and vice versa. And the same applies between sessions, three hours almost between first and second session. Maybe Mark Allen's hoping against hope this isn't the case, but maybe Trump has got a second wind. Unless there, there is a red that goes to the right corner. Be the only way I think of keeping this break going. He looked at a red across the top one of the two close together. Well, it, it definitely passed, but it's very difficult a shot to judge. Cuball crashing into other balls. Plenty of risk in playing it. But it's definitely on. I can't blame Trump for being attacking. That's the only way back, as far as I can see. But of course, when you attack, you have to bear the consequences if you miss. Yes, he, for him to get onto the black, he wants to pot the red that's just to the right of the black spot before he takes that ball and ties it up. So he could land on that red sooner rather than later, then really he could be in business here. It's a good chance. It's a question of the early shots to make all these things happen. It's the chance he'd been waiting for this evening. Seven. It's taking them a frame and a bit for this to come along.
Alan's been scoring very dependably in this tournament. He's made at least one century. In all four matches he's played, including a 137 total clearance this afternoon in frame six. It's a prerequisite of success in modern snooker. Heavy scoring, certainly at this level. Well, on his previous red, he just nudged that red on the black spot away from there. Thirty-eight. Yeah, I could shot that because with the blue away from his spot, it's easy to just sort of play up for the conventional plays that the blue is and not be on it, but it looks perfect. Well, it's just shy of where he really wants to be. Choice of both reds. It should be okay, but Cuba could have run a little further down, stretching a bit on this one. But nowhere near enough to stop him. Now with the wrong side of the blue, with the red into bolt pocket, it comes into play. He's got the right blend, doesn't he? He's, he's a very tight player these days. He doesn't leave big chances, but he, you feel that he's waiting for something, and this was the opportunity he really wanted before Judd made any inroads tonight. He's happy to share the frames with this man from here on in. Yes, and he's renowned on the circuit as having a steely temperament, doesn't buckle 56. on the big occasion. <coughs> like everyone else, he has his off days, of course, but when it comes to nerve and bottle, he's as good as anyone. <coughs> 57. Well, he made very sure of the red, but in doing so, he's not finished on the colour very well. He could do with this going in, this blue, because just where the yellow and brown are, forgetting snookers, you know, there's a, a, a glimmer. The Judd Trump, but not if this goes in. I mean, he's compelled to play on here. Two snookers needed, but he got two snookers and won the frame against Sean Murphy in the quarterfinals. Late on. Now Alan moved on that one. That's why he caught it wholly incorrectly.
I don't think uh, Mark Allen will mind that Judd potted the red there. Always more awkward with a red on the table and a free ball and all the things that can go with it. If you do make a foul. Yes, he's probably going to get a snooker here. Could he be splitting up those two balls in the process? Eight. They're close together and they're good to get snookers behind. Not more than one though now, obviously. Yeah. Not really Eight. what he was looking for, to be honest. The target is bigger now. You can hit it directly or if you just hit the cushion first and still catch the yellow. I don't think Judd really gained much by potting that red, personally. Alan, though, will not be feeling entirely comfortable. Well, obviously priority, if you don't hit the green, is not to hit the black instead. Because then it would be possible for Judd to tie the frame. So don't leave a free ball if you do slide past this green ball player gently. But he's done that. Wow. Well, it's not as bad as it looks. I think if he had to hit something other than the green, he'd have chosen the pink instead of the black. 26 in it, 25 on. Interesting though, isn't it? He's laid two good snookers. Is there any way that he could go around the back of this green? Maybe from the right side. But it's not such a wide angle from this side to slip round the back of it. It's been one of those tournaments now, hasn't it? We talked about Trump getting the two snookers against Murphy. In the quarterfinals, Barry Hawkins in the first frame got two snookers to win a frame against Robert Milkins. The first frame, and it set the pattern for the entire match. This would be a massive blow for Mark Allen if he were to lose this. Another chance to quell the nerves, to put it to bed. <laughs> We've reverted to a couple of snookers required again. Trump remained in his seat, he nods in concession, and that means Mark Allen restores his five-frame buffer zone.
next weekend at the Players' Championship in Minehead. And I can tell you what, I'm led to believe he's made a century at snooker, Neil. Multi-talented. Well, that's uh, not easy to do, so I'm sure uh, I've seen him play darts and he's terrific at that. If he's good Thank at you, snooker, well, he's talented. Mark Allen today. Can Mark Allen move within a frame of a £150,000 jackpot? And joining Ronnie O'Sullivan and Neil Robertson as a multiple winner of the Champion of Champions. Beautifully struck that one. It really was with the top spin to take him up the table. But the accuracy he still got with the speed and like I say, hitting top of the cue ball. There's too many good players on, on at the top end of the tour for one player to dominate for long. That's why what Judd Trump has done by winning three ranking events. In a few weeks is such a notable achievement. But people like Mark Allen, he's going to hit a peak at some point and he's going to do damage. And I think this is the week where that's all began. Defenses UK Championship in York coming up the week after next. So he's got everything to play for right now. I don't know how much he thinks of this event, the Champion of Champions, which he won. 2020, behind closed doors and all that. 12. Just something very strange there, you know. He won the Champion of Champions and then changed his cue yeah. almost the next day. Didn't make a lot of sense to me. <laughs> Why well, fix something that isn't broken? Almost immediately got a different cue. I think he just said with Brendan there, just kill area up where the pink ball, ball was meant to go. I think Mark was inquiring if it possibly went any closer to his spot. Eighteen. Has to get them open. to dislodge those two reds a little more away from the black than he actually did. Uh, that's right. He certainly wanted to just take the red further away. It still might be okay. I mean, that red probably still goes. The other red might go to the opposite corner. But he's interested to see if the pink will go now, putting him behind his own spot. I 
yeah, the pink uh, is just put in line behind its own spot there. I think it will go. It was indeed in line. Might be looking offline because the black pants was away from his own spot. Either way, none of that really matters because he's got everything open now. Here it is. This is a way. Finish low on that pink. Bring all the reds out. The pink thing where it was was the perfect vehicle to split open the reds. Well, he's worried about the lack of pace. He knew straight away he hadn't hit it hard enough. And he knows how disappointing that is because everything was there for him. He just didn't hit the shot. This is his second prize in behind the green. He didn't want Judd coming back to the table at all, obviously. So it's kind of a lifeline for Judd, although no one really wants to ever be in a snooker like this. It's just marginally better than anything else. At least he's back at the table. Trouble is, there aren't many reds he can just lay up to. They're all out in open play. Yeah, you see, that was the problem. It was really awkward there. So he's got a second bite at the cherry, Mark Allen. He'll be grateful for that. One. And now from here, you would confidently expect him to go on and win the frame. The key, though, not whether we confidently expected, whether he does. And I get the sense he's playing with great authority and he's full of self-belief. Sir. Yeah, he's a different player at the moment, isn't he? We had that, he had that spell where he slowed everything up and almost didn't help himself, that world semi-final. Yeah. Because it was a great achievement to get that far, but now with Mark Selby, that was a grueling match, which went on into the morning, basically of uh, of the final itself. She lost, but now he's got the balance. He wanted to change his game a little bit, but he didn't want to take away the the strength that he's got, and that's what a big scorer he is. Somewhere in between, this is the Mark Allen in front of us that we're going to see. I think. And if he gets his frame to go 9-3 up against Judd Trump, the way he's been playing it, who could argue? Trump has not seen many finals like this recently. Yes, Mark Allen said earlier this week that he was looking for the perfect balance, and I think he's found it. Moderation in all things, not too attacking but certainly not too defensive either. In this match, he's played at 24 seconds a shot, which is a very agreeable rhythm.
The crowd have done their arithmetic. That was frame ball. Snooker required. One more red needed for complete safety. Yeah, two scoring visits to the table, so not a, a huge break or anything, but a shot in between with the snooker, which he put Judd in, so he didn't really give him anything. A pretty watertight frame for Mark Allen to take him within one. Mark Allen's work is almost done. He's one frame away from an 18th professional title. Play. Need something truly miraculous. For once, quite wayward there. Missed that red. We're hitting too much of it. I wonder if Tr Judd Trump really has given up any real hope of winning now. It's a long way back, isn't it? Although we did see 9 4 in the Tour Championship overturned when uh, John Higgins was beaten 10 9 by Neil Robertson in the end. But it's very unusual. It's a big lead. Yeah, Robertson also came back from 8-4 down, the brink of defeat to beat Cao Yupeng, 9-8 in a Scottish Open final. But those kind of outcomes are few and far between. And as we said before, Mark Allen is a rock, a really good front runner. Doesn't buckle, doesn't collapse.
Yes, I mean, that Masters final. But, uh, Steve Davis, first to nine, came from 8-2 down to beat Mike Hallett, 9-8 is the, the same sort of, in, in the case of numbers. Sure, that was very satisfying for him. Yeah, Hendry was 7-0 down in that match. But despite the one-sided nature of the scoreline, there will be no complacency whatsoever from Mark Allen. He wants to get over the line as swiftly as he possibly can, especially given the, the quality of the opposition, because you just never know. Allen has beaten Trump heavily before. A couple of 6-1 victories. But if he could finish it at 10-3, that would be immensely satisfying. Well, he thought he saw a plant. But the angle he was coming into the first red from was not right behind it, which it always makes those shots more difficult. Well, what a chance this is to get this match done and as you said earlier you know, if you could get a win of this magnitude in a big fun like this it would kind of set out a, a warning to the other players that he absolutely is back to the kind of form which we saw him 
in in the first half of last season. Went quiet after that, but because you can't do it all the time, that's basically the reason for it. Six. Mark Allen is the only non-world champion to win the champion of champions over the years. Now he's on the threshold of lifting the silverware twice. Congestion being eased. Now, does the black go anywhere near its own spot? The green is a possibility, of course. Green spot, that's the only other place it can go, and it's the pink is somehow it in play. No, it goes on its own, and it's tied up as a consequence. But he can make do with the pink in play. And this is a sort of areas where he's usually very good, just short little shots at close range. Well, he isn't necessarily using the cushions, just playing in the middle of the table. It makes it look easy, but you've got to have a very, like a beautiful touch to do what Mark Allen does when he's in. To get those balls so close together and to eliminates a lot of the things that can go wrong. Again, that's absolutely A1. So much about this game is the cue ball and the control of it. Wanted to screw back slightly more than he did there. Yeah, for sure he did. He might have to go up the table here, straight or just further to the left. He's got the simplest shot to roll the pink in and be on the reds below into the left corner. He hasn't got it now. He's got to go up to the red in bulk. Things can just get further out of control in these breaks. He's got a chance to recover it straight away. But given he shouldn't be there, all of a sudden shots like this can now be missed. But he uh, recovers nicely. You know the old saying, Neil, the last frame is the hardest to win. I think with Mark Allen, it isn't. And shown on multiple occasions he's made of granite he's got what all snooker players crave coolness Four. 
48. I don't think Judd is feeling that he's going to come back to the table here. He's seen enough of Mark Allen scoring today, and he probably feels that uh, yeah, this golden run is over. Yes, he didn't win last week in Tianjin. He was beaten by Stephen Maguire, but getting to the final here, it was a continuation of his great form. But on the day, he's definitely been second best by some margin. And he's on the brink. And this would mean a lot because Mark Allen came in for quite a lot of criticism for how he'd slowed his game down. At times, probably to his detriment. But he's got the balance right now, that's for sure. This is it. In goes the pink. Mark Allen in the pink himself. Sixty-nine. It's been a dominant display. How fitting it would be if Allen could possibly finish off. 75. With a century. Oh, what a shame. Never mind. That was a minor consideration. The major job has been done. And a major tournament has been won. Last season, he won three big events. But I get the impression, given who he's beaten today, and how handily he's beaten Jack Trump, this might be one of the sweetest victories of all. Mark Allen is the champion. He defeats Judd Trump by 10 frames to three. Let's go down to Rob Walker on the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, before the interviews, may we have another round of applause for two truly world-class players. Judd, it has without question been the best start to any season of your career, but today you came up against a man who was not to be denied. Yeah, it was um, obviously a good first four frames. I felt maybe I should have been two or even three, one in front. Um, yeah, I just missed too many easy balls all day. I, I struggled really and um, couldn't get going. My safety uh, was hitting every single bolt colour every time and, and Mark was potting them from there really so yeah it's, it's, it's fine margins really uh, against someone that good you, you've got to get the white nailed to the back cushion and um, even when you do get chances you can't miss on 10 or anything like that so yeah disappointing day at the office but he played really well I think I kind of struggled through the first few rounds to get to the final I think Mark probably was the best player in the whole tournament and normally the best player wins and, and that's what happened. And at the start of the season, if someone had said to you by the end of the Champ of Champs, you'd have three titles and you'd been in two finals, you would have taken that at the start of the campaign? No. No, <laughs> no it's, it's, been, it's been a great start. It's, um, I think... Still got three, yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> yeah, it's been an amazing start to the season. Obviously, it's tough to, after you've just lost um, sort of a heavy defeat, but yeah, it's been sort of a, a dream start to, to the calendar and um, hopefully there'll be plenty more finals. I'm sure it's nice to see Mark back in form now. He, he was sort of the, the main man last year, so um, it gives me something to aim at again now. Well, and, and you've got some great, great encounters to come with him. This could be a rivalry that defines our sport for the next 10 years. You have produced some great matches together over the years. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good to have someone around my own age um, this, this sort of standing up and delivering um, it's getting a bit, a bit easy otherwise so it's nice to have, have Mark there putting the, putting the work in you can tell he's been working hard um, so yeah working normally gets, gets the rewards so yeah it's going to be an exciting season I think Mark back to form and 
a few other players coming back is going to be an amazing rest of the season. It certainly is. You've spoken with real grace tonight. Judd Trump, your runner-up, ladies and gents. Mark, you've said a couple of times this week, arenas like this, crowds like this, and opponents like him are the very reason you first picked up a cue. You are the man for the big stage, and you proved it brilliantly today. Yeah, you've said it all there. Uh, this is why we play, to play in front of the best crowds in the best events against the very best in the world. And there's no doubt Judd this season has been far and away the best player on the planet. So it's up to the rest of us to catch up and fed up texting him after every tournament to say well done. Uh, so uh, it's nice to get one over on him, but look, he'll be back and I'm sure he'll give me a few passions as the years go on. Uh, you've been very honest about the fact that it hasn't been as good a start to the season this year as last year, but your campaign has just been ignited by getting your hands on that magnificent trophy for the second time. Yeah, I would tell you what I really felt about the start of the season, if I could swear on TV, but I got told off the last time. Uh, <laughs> But uh, it's been very poor. I've been putting the work in, I've been practicing really hard, and uh, yeah, I don't really want to mention this, but I've been a bit lost because I lost a really good friend in the summer, someone who's been by my side since I was 12 years of age. Uh, Joe Short's not here with us anymore. He was a big part of my life, not just on the table, but off it. Uh, and me and my dad have probably lost one of our closest friends, so that was for Joe. And I'm sure you'd already made him proud before tonight. And if he is looking down, he'll be full of admiration for you. And I wonder, bearing in mind what you've just said, how close is this? I know Northern Ireland against John Higgins from 8-6 down was very, very special on home turf in Belfast. But how close is this to the very top of your achievements? To win any tournament like this, because these are the players that are on form in the last 12 months, to win this event, it means your game's in good shape. Uh, like Judd said, I've been working so hard to try and get my game back. I don't want to see other people winning all the trophies. I want to be part of that. Uh, but ultimately, you just have to play better, and I hadn't been doing that. So to come here and find some form is probably more important than anything else. I really enjoyed playing this week. And to beat anyone of Judd's class in the final, 10-3, you know, I'm going right places. And a word for the crowd. We've had some brilliant, brilliant support this week. There is barely a spare seat in the arena. The crowd in Bolton have created a wonderful backdrop for this drama. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hopefully we'll stay here for a while to come. It's, been, it's created its own magic in the last few years. No two great finals the two years before uh, Judd's been in both. Uh, hopefully we can find a, you know, a permanent place on the calendar for this event because it deserves a great crowd like this. And you no know, thanks to everyone, even though you were cheering Jimmy on. Uh, obviously cheering Judd on the final. But look, it's been great. This is why we play the game. You, know, you want to play in packed arenas against the best in the world, and I'm just happy to be part of it. And you can have a bit of a celebration tonight, but not too much, because you have a UK Championship title to defend very soon. Let's get Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I won last night, because I didn't have to go to Disney on ice this, today that I had for it. So uh, it's, it's great just to be back winning, but I'm not taking anything for granted. I'll be straight back home tomorrow on the practice table and get ready for flying away on Thursday for the UK. Mark, you are a tremendous ambassador for Northern Ireland sport, for our sport. You are the champion once again. Mark Allen, ladies and gents. Please welcome, presenting the award, CEO of Matrim Multisport, Emily Fraser. And now we hand over the Runners Up Award, winning £60,000. Please give it up for the ace in the pack, Judd Trump! <laughs> and now your winner of £150,000, and now a two-time champion of champions, it's the pistol, Mark!
accomplished, not just in the two sessions of this final, Stephen, but over the course of the week? Yep, dominant performance all week. Um, we thought he played the first day and he had uh, went home and you think, is he going to come back as sharp? But he did. Um, tremendous win last night over John Higgins, who I think a lot of us thought John Higgins might come through that match. Took John apart, and, and you have to be fair, took Judd Trump apart today in the final. Yeah, we started with Mark Allen, we finished with Mark yeah. Allen. Um, you know, as Stephen says, he has been the form player this week. Yeah. Certainly that's what Judd Trump said as well. He was the best player oh. here this week, and therefore it's absolutely right that he should win the, yeah. win the trophy. Yeah, without a doubt, an impeccable performance against, you know, the man on form who's been absolutely flying, Judd Trump. But as Stephen said, he took him apart, dominated right from, I think, as I said, we, that, that first session was so important, those couple of stolen frames gave him the platform and he just kept going on he kept his foot on the gas all the way through the final totally dominated and uh, yeah impeccable imperious performance for mark allen and you know it's a solo sport you go out there alone and you face mm. your opponent alone and you take all of that responsibility on but clearly you can see from mark, mark allen more people are involved it's a team effort uh, and it's great to see him celebrate the moment with those who have played an important part in helping him towards this success we're going to take a short break now when we come back